load in here. The sides are different. Antic, they have a 2-0 series lead. Bliss are fighting to stay in it. But they certainly are. Could be the final game that Bliss play this season, and they do not want it to be a defeat. That is for sure. They were the first seed coming into this one, and they want to be the second team that goes over to PCS, joining Grand Zero. As for Antic, a team of veterans, a team that has shown time and time again that they still have what it takes. Ten tournament uh, titles in the Oceanic region with nearly 1,800 games played between them. They're an absolute force to be reckoned with and certainly a big reason why. They're 2-0. Oh. All that experience paying dividends here. Yeah, and you have to imagine fun. even more so as we head into the latest stages of this series now. An interesting level one play there by Antic to establish vision in the top side. This is one of the ways you can kind of protect your twisted fate because Udia, he really has a window level one if he wants to use that double awaken on the Phoenix stance to be able to find a nice trade. But because of that ward being dropped, it will allow Zonus this extra bit of safety. Now, that did buy time for a ward to be dropped by the side of Team Bliss. They'll know where Swipe is starting. And once again, it's a question of, okay, what can why not do with this information? It's a worthwhile point that you say as Roma instantly jumps in from the level one mark with the rocket jump and makes sure to land as much damage as he can into Harry, who no doubt as the levels go by, he's going to start to trade back even more aggressively into the Tristana. But it is worth mentioning the priority differences this time around. As we've seen for the last, what, two games in a row, it's been a case where Anti get the first dragon, Bliss get the first three void grubs, and that hasn't changed too much. Not at all. No, completely been the same for those two games. Now, something else that's been decently similar is Violet and Scott here in the bot lane. They've got the double range matchup, so they're going to be able to secure the priority. Now, question is, does Swiper want to get active towards this bot side? It's obviously a very hard lane to gank with the Renata. And he will acknowledge that and flip to the other side of the map here. Biopanther's done a decent job of being able to get at least somewhat of a priority in this top lane. Will be burning through a fair amount of health and mana to be able to do so. See the Swiper second guessing whether or not he can go for the Raptors right after already taking them, but does make his way towards the top half of the map. Working towards Dominus to offer any kind of protection if it were needed. We certainly know that a champion like the Zin is very keen to get active nice and early. Seeing, I think, Schoenfire demonstrate that more than anybody else in the league this season. This champion can get the ball rolling nice and early. The rest of your team just absolutely gets the flourish and already poking his head into mid lane with level three and a red buff too. Went to see what Harry can achieve Whoa. as he rocket jumps in and instantly regrets that one. Answers back with a little bit of a trade with that explosive stock stacked up, but the flash wind becomes lightning. The audacious charge there, and that's audacious enough because it gives Bliss first blood. Audacious is the perfect word for it. Ryoma knew that Why Not was in that bush. He was peeing onto him earlier but ultimately just gets overconfident, thinks that the flash will be enough to make the distance. It's not, though, and why not? Crucially, getting active here in Game 1, something that he struggled to do all series, he'll pick up Burst Blood. Perfect start for them. We've said that before in terms of early games going their way, but that's what you need, an early, aggressive champion, and especially around the mid-jungle that you highlighted very early. Yeah, you can see in the top lane, Zoranus really having a good time in this lane. By Panther, yes, he has the sustain, but as this lane goes on, TF will be able to bully down this Udia. Priority in his favor. The two pots already expended here by Bio. So obviously, game plan pretty similar to his previous uh, showing on TF, where you just want to play for that level 6, get yourself that TP, and then the fact that you have a disadvantage in the summoner spells really doesn't matter whatsoever because you can get yourself back to lane now. Mid lane Ooh. swiper. Instantly with the flash twisted advance, lock him on his head, but a fantastic scatter of the week. Make sure that Ryoma is not able to offer any kind of damage to really force that gank to be a favorable one. So uh, nice little interaction there, but even better disengage to prevent the Syndra falling. Genuinely just beautiful from Harry. He doesn't even have to use the flash because of him landing that scatter of the week. And that just means that Swiper on this Maokai will have used that summoner for basically no gain here. The mid lane, both TPs expended. And this time, the early game's looking good for Bliss. A thousand gold is the lead. We check back in with bot lane every time. They do manage to continue having the push. And that will enable a very early dragon start here for Why Not. And certainly well, it's going to be completely there to flip the script around what we come to expect of this one. But playing around that lane priority is going to be the name of the game. As it does seem like they're going to get that crash in quite nicely. 
Pano head back to mid lane. You can see that Ryoma having forced uh, Harry back is be quite content in pushing out this wave instead and starting to build up a bit of a lead of his own as he's trending, what, one wave behind at the moment. We'll get given a bit of a chance to catch up. Yeah, did find a nice trade there, forcing Harry back to base. It is a cannon wave, so obviously not going to miss too much in the way of CS. But it does buy Ryoma a nice little window to get his reset off. Now, we talked about trades. Already the trading script has kind of been flipped as Hook barely misses from Dragku. But it will be that first dragon falling in favor of Team Blister. Grub's now the objective that Swipe is looking at. He has top lane priority, but this is on vision of Team Bliss. They should know that Ryoma is coming from base as well. So I do see a world in which they're going to contest these. Certainly would expect so. And uh, at this stage too, it's a case of really Antic picking up one and saying, well, we can't really afford to take much more than that. Your mid jungle is stronger. Your Udi has got the crash. Our lanes are just looking to cruise on by. And with the vision reveal there from Why Not with Bio Hot in Pursuit. They'll spot them, but they'll say you can have those two. And Swiper has to be so careful now. He doesn't have Flash, and even though he has a TF with Ultimate to be able to get down and help him in the 2v2, he still doesn't want to take that risk. So we'll just be walked off. Does manage to pick up the one grub. So not all three are going to be able to go over to Why Not here. But still, firm objective control going over to Team Bliss. Bio is able to fight back decently in the top lane with that first purchase of the Ninja Tabis. And Antic rarely will be the slow ones to the objective. Yeah, they certainly will be. I think you raised a good point about uh, how this Bio Udia pick is working. Sort of form Life Leech. Certainly enough to try and uh, really sustain through all this pain. Sure, the Aatrox was good in that same regard too with all the lifesteal online, but... No, we're near the same of what this Udi is able to provide. Much more of a tanky champion right out the door. Rams and both these supports unable to really try and impact these lands too much as Bolin has been a bit of a stalemate with the Varish just really having his way of things. We've seen this happen before though. Hasn't really uh, made much of a difference though once the team fights came around. I mean, that Aphilios last game was incredibly fed. But it all amounted for nothing. And that's really what we're going to be looking to Bliss to be able to show us here in this game 3 is the fact that they can translate these leads that they have accrued into meaningful team fight wins in the late game. As for the time being, it's about 17 CS separating these 280 carries. The Zyre first pick obviously suffering in terms of range and Dragon might be suffering here as well. He's going to be in trouble. The handshake goes out, shoved against the wall, no level 6. And instantly out comes the Nature's Grass. Trains to get themselves out. The Crescent Guard to knock them back. And Wino is the one that stands strong. But now Violet is over pushed himself he's low flash flash and everybody flash but they're not going to get away as unfortunately for antic they lose everything and don't trade back at all we asked if they could continue to find fights and team bliss give us a resounding yes this time violent or why not really able to be the difference makers there empowered by scott on this renata the initial engage was to pick out dragku and without a level 6 being available for King, he's so vulnerable on this Zaya. Falls down. As we take a look at how it all starts, you can see Drake is a little bit caught here. Yes, there's a response from Swiper, but why not here is incredibly tanky, especially once that Crescent Guard comes out. Unable to find the damage onto him. Meanwhile, Violet gets the kill onto Draku. So much attack speed existing. And with the flash forward, the bailout coming from Scott. They're able to find the clean three for zero. But they certainly did. Read them well with the flash to follow to guarantee that the uptime was pretty much perfect there. These are really promising signs then for Bliss. It's a perfect game so far. 4-0 for them in all the right places. Their jungle that may have been suffering from a bit of a relapse in confidence is able to really explode into life here. Down at a match point. And really... Violet Show, where he's always been the go-to for laning expertise, coming into effect. Yeah, he's really far ahead now on this Faris. The question is, is can he stay ahead in the space of this level 6 coming out of Drag Coup? Really, with Renata in the lane, he does feel quite empowered. Because even if the Nautilus hook is managing to land, there's always a hostile takeover and no cleanse online for King. Means that he would have no way to remove that one for the time being. Now, 30 seconds on this next dragon spawn. The good thing about how quickly one was able to grab the first Infernal Dragon was that they really can accelerate themselves towards a soul win condition. This is something that they can leverage because of that bot lane priority and can definitely be a way to secure this game in their favor. 
And that's the overall outcome they'll be hoping for here. Is a bit of a misstep from Zonis. Means that Bayer gets a chance to try and answer back and do a bit of damage of his own. But despite all that, it still will be the twist of fate that comes out ahead. That gold card, that movement speed, it's just ever so annoying. Genuinely has to be one of the most annoying top lane champions to verse, I reckon. Like, even if yeah. you're able to find a misposition, he just gold cards you and runs away with fleet footwork and swifties. But once again, right on cue here is, hold on, the training in the mid lane. Yeah, nice ultimate though, isn't it? To knock back Harry, otherwise there was potential for a little bit more damage. It already burnt the ultimate, but it wasn't lethal just yet. They're both critically low and with both junglers hovering, they're wondering if they can find much more. The oh. flash! Oh, you'd want to say calculated, but that was incredibly low. Swiper takes the gambit, jumps in on Harry's head and says, I'll just bash you down with these hands. There's Zodis TPs in with the Destiny and finds out that the fight is already over. Yeah, TPs in. Doesn't get the gold card to lock down. Why not? Potentially could have found something on the back end there with why not. But it really was so close to being a kill there for Harry. You can see where I am living on just a sliver of health. Means that the first kill for Antic will be able to be found. A nice steal coming out from one on as well. And with Scott in the area, they're looking to pick up their five Void Drops. For the first time in the series then. And this could be a big one. The ability to actually have some pushing power. And really not feel like a, uh, a lost chicken running around the map saying, what fight can we go for? Five Void Grubs go their way. And you have a very strong Varus that would love an invitation to freely hit a tower. Well, he just wants to fight it right now, Ryoma. Looking to avoid one in the mid lane. That rocket jump always going to find so much value in being able to negate anything that a Syndra and Zinzel wants to throw at you. But like you highlighted, really, Violet is the one who they're looking to play through here. Going back to base now, you assume to pick up his Blade of the Ruin King. Actually, a big cancel there is. Hold on. No one else could be in trouble right now. He's got the ghost, he's got the flash, but he holds it. He believes himself, he knows he doesn't need to burn it, and just really weathers the storm, but might have been off more than he can chew here as they go in for that second re-engage with the cooldowns ramping. Look at the damage from Zonus on the bio. He's taking the 1v2 as a twisted fate, playing as if he's what, like a Cassante or set? Just spacing them perfectly there is Zonus, baiting them in, forces the ghost out from Bio Panther in response. And you can see, even though Why Not's really fed here, has the Sundered Sky, they're not able to find the damage, not able to find the lockdown necessary to take down Zorana. So once again, he will evade capture and continues to waste Why Not's time. Playing like he's a bruiser, but an incredibly fed caster at this point, already with the Kraken Slayer done. You talk about Violet being the strong point on the bot side of the map. Well, Zorana's once again. He's been the standout, certainly has been the MVP. Good flash. Protects the bounty, protects that perfect KDA, and prevents Antic fighting an avenue back in. And honestly, it's just been a bit of a sequence of a greedy bases here from Violet. There was one under his turret that got cancelled by King, and now a flash trade out. I mean, yes, you get those summoners exchanged, but you are more than happy taking that as the Chains of Corruption oh, not cleansed. Oh, no! He's cleansed a little bit too early there, but ultimately doesn't get punished by it, just out of range of the handshake Scott was hoping to find, and I think that's a very lucky let off. Yeah, it is. The extra tenacity is still going to be enough to get him out of there in harm in terms of being able to be safe still. As Hold on, Draku is very far behind enemy lines here. Can they actually chase him down? Yeah, they've completely flanked around. The key focus has killed this uh, Avaris. He's not based. He might look strong, but he doesn't have the items to actually show for it. So he falls on down. Draku picks that one up. They turn on to Scott, his lane partner, as Ryoma tries to disengage away with the rocket jump, but it's a little bit too late. Goes this mid-jungle pairing of Bliss. Packs a big punch. Double now for Wido. He's 4-0. and oh, And Swiper can only look as he twists and advances to a minion. Says, I'll pick this one up. As they go for the slow kill after. Violet falls down. But Team Bliss stand triumphant after that one. Why not really in these extended skirmishes finding so much value. I'm sure we'll take a look at the replay. Here it goes. You can see Draku is very far out of position trying to cancel the base of Violet. And you can see all of Antic, they're converging on towards this Varus. But Harry, he's TP'd in behind. So even though the initial kill is found onto Barnet, eventually there's still all of the damage of a Syndra and a Jin Zhao to deal with. They take out Ryoma, and that means it's just the support and jungle for Antic. No damage to be found anywhere. All that's left is to slowly chase them down and claim your prize. It's a nice pickup. It certainly does... Uh Keep them in with a fighting chance here. You've lost your prize. That's it in the bot lane. 
but you shared the wealth around the rest of the team. And now you look at why not KDA. 4-0-4, Tilt has not been found. No, not at all. He's completely turned it around here. And with 25 seconds left on this Dragon Spawn timer, you would imagine this is something they want to look towards. This would definitely accelerate them towards that Mountain Soul win condition. And with all the items that they've got online, there's a serious disparity in power. You can see Ryoma will base now to pick up his Kraken Slayer, but that means he'll be delayed in terms of resetting on the map already. The AD carry item difference is being pronounced. The Blade of the Ruin King already in the hands of Violet, and that will enable him to feel very good heading into this fight. Almost no contest to be had here as Bliss will pick up their third dragon. From an objective standpoint, this has been an absolute landslide. Fort has been an incredibly close affair with us trading back and forth the Void Grubs, the Drakes, and never really getting to a point where an Elder was even a conversation piece. This one has taken the cake, and uh, we talk about pressure, we talk about the mental edge. What a way to try and bounce back into the series, and I think if you were to lose this one, that really would shatter you, but... And to get our answer back, you can get that third dragon, you can put yourself on for a 21-minute soul, but we'll deny you that prized asset of the Herald. The Herald will hurt a little bit, especially if you're able to use it up in towards the lane where TF is pushing. But as for the time being, like you highlighted, that's a 20-minute, 20 21-minute soul, rather, that could be coming online. Definitely not something you want to be facing against the likes of an Udia and a Jin Zhao. So, for the time being, Antic, they'll be confined to catching midwaves under their turret. But with Hayri here, they're just going to crack this. They certainly are. Five stacks. Very easy. Just to walk into the lane, hit it a few times, and down it goes. That'll be their second of the game. Opening up the mid lane. Looks good for them now. It's worth mentioning, though. You look at the side of I uh, itemization on Antic. They've got a triple Kraken Slayer set up. There's heaps of DPS coming out of these guys. If they're able to actually hit in a consistent front-to-back fight, you do worry for the side of Team Bliss, but so far they haven't been able to find those skirmishes. Misnumbered fights have really been the key here for Team Bliss. For the time being, it will just return to neutral. 2,000 separating these two teams and Biopanther. The tankiness he's been able to pick up, still feeling a bit of the pain, but will be able to shove the waves in. That's really key, and that's something that they're missing from their previous games was it felt like Biopanther was always catching them, always being the one who had to show up last to the play because he was responding. And this time, even though Zoran is, feels like he's perpetually on top of the gold graph, Bio will have a bit more agency in this one. We have a bit more, uh, but it does feel like we're clutching at straws when you look at that. He's still 2,000 gold behind you thinking, how on earth has this happened? You're down, what, 30 CS, but all those plates, all that gold from the tower taken down too. It is still such an uphill battle. Those frozen hearts, though, may just find infinite value when you talk about locking down all these AD-centric champs that just want the uptime, want those front-to-backs that you highlight. And that's the issue with the comp that Antic have drafted themselves, right? It literally only is AD damage coming out. And yes, you have a lot of DPS and Kraken Slayers and LDRs, which I'm sure will be built to kind of get around that. But still, it makes these cheap armor purchases incredibly effective, like you highlighted. Frozen Heart, already online for Why Not, who with the Crescent Guard is nigh unkillable in team fights. As Antic, they look to get trade in this spot side. By Panther, very tanky, but they do have the Herald here. And with a Tristana and a Twisted Fate in the area, this turret is not long for the world. It is gone. It won't survive, that for sure. As Bayer will trim the wave as much as he can. But Zornis actually goes for the gamble Whoa. of saying, I'll use the Herald to run away. I know I'm getting ganked. Now I'm in trouble. The ult goes out instantly to try and land that scatter of the week. And it does connect the gold card there with the Ghost and Flash active. Especially all that movement speed in his itemization. He's narrowly escaped. He tried to get a little bit funky there with the Herald, but ultimately it will be taken down as Bayer Panther. Oh. He's been baited. He just got a whiff of vision there. Oh, look at that. The Bramble smash into the hook. And Bio, he's going to feel a little bit scammed on an occasion as Why Not jumps in, wants to exert his pressure, showcase just how strong his Zintao is. The Chenna Corruptions, crucially, not going to land. As seemingly Swiper says, I'll concede myself. You boys run away. One for one. Tank's going to fall down on either side of the fight there. And the whole time, King is actually just being top lane, pushing out these waves. Feeling pretty good here, but on the other side, like you highlighted, Biopanther just falling a little bit victim to the confidence that he had. He really thought he could have actually picked up the players. Hold on for a second here. Pings are coming out onto this Baron. They've got a lot of DPS and Swipe is dead for 10 seconds. Baron on spawn. They feel like they can do enough, especially with the likes of King forced to reset back to base. 
I don't think Antic really can put up much of a contest of this one. And they're gonna have a look at it. Only now does Swiper respawn, but that Baron is seemingly gone. Yeah, it's just completely gone here now. Can they get out? Why not? It's gonna potentially look to get aggressive, but they're just out skimming. What an absolute heist from the side of Team Bliss. They say, okay, not only is Swiper dead, but we know that Antic are on resets. We know that they're gonna have to come from base. And with all the damage we have right now, with our Syndra and Varus, we're going to be able to burn through this one. And what better time to pick up that buff than 30 seconds before a potential Mountain Soul? It's perfect. It really is, right? You've made sure that you still retain that gold lead, that you have the tempo to do as you please, and that you can rush back to base to use all that gold and guarantee that Mountain Soul is yours. Yeah, so is fishing for a Cardi, but he finds the stun. Very greedy from Dominus there. Completely punishes the result having no summoners. And as a result, the fight breaks out. It's a one for one so far. We'll find it instantly dying. But in the cleanse for simply not enough. Burst before we can even burn a flash to safety. It's not incredibly low. The bailout not there. And the hostile takeover not even enough to try and force Antic back. So now we have a drawn out 4v4 A-Rap. Yeah, but Scott is very low here on this Renata. A single spell will be able to take him down. As Harry looking for another stun. Certainly is. King to focus right now. The Featherstone coming there after the fact as they drag back Bio. And they say, what can we do until why not? As he jumps in for the Hail Mary attempt. And they do certainly get their kill. Scott flashing into effect himself. And says, I've got no HP. But does it really matter? Roma flashing on in. Burning to the Ignite. Trying to life steal off Bio. But he's too tanky. Harry gets the double. And from buff to buff, they go. We asked if why not was done both in this series and in this game. And the answer is a resounding no. Stays alive for so long amidst all the members of Antic. As we take a look at the initial st start of this play, you can see Harry just Zoranus out of position, flashes on top of him and kills him. Meanwhile, Violet, I don't think there's time for the bailout to come through because Scott is trapped in the animation of the hostile takeover. And that means that you lose your Varus early on. That's huge given how much DPS is able to put out. But keep your eyes on to Why Not here. He really is the hero of this play. You can see they bait the vision. They kill this control one and then set up a little pick here. Trying to find something. As it's the stun from Harry. That is the go button for Why Not to get amidst four here. And yes, everyone's hitting him. They're inside his ultimate. But even so, he's able to survive. They're not able to kill him because of how tanky he is. And that enables all of the members of Team Bliss to get into the fight. Ryoma finds one but falls down himself. Four kills and the soul going over to Team Bliss. And these drawn out fights are seemingly working in Team Bliss's favor, even more so now that they've got all those extra resistances online with the Mountain Soul being theirs. It has been an objective control kingdom and really the first time we've seen Wano exert his control showcasing that he is the jungle main. And it shouldn't be too easy for Swiper to cycle through those five different champions. They'll set up a siege. They'll match the towers taken. And with the Baron now expiring, back to base they go. Yeah, back to base. Reset's coming through here. You can see their inventory is feeling quite nice at the moment. Harry's just finished up his third item, and well, it should be soon to follow. You can see they're setting a bit of a trap here onto Ryoma. Don't do it, Ryoma. Don't do it. He's face checked. Well, not even face checked. He's just being met by a chain of corruption. And he doesn't have the luxury of a cleanse to get him out. So the trap finally working. Team Bliss have been trying multiple times throughout this best of five. But this time it works in their favor. And yet again now they get to force that numbers mismatch because it's a 3v5 defending the space. And that's the problem with having a Zaya, right? Is you're actually quite short range in terms of being able to land your wave clear. So it means that Team Bliss can just threaten here with the Syndra. They're going to crack the in here. And that will go largely unpunished. You can see by Panthers reset to be able to deal with the wave that Zoran has pushed in. And so far, the Silence haven't been anywhere near as big of a threat as Hold On. Team Bliss, they're all on a ward here, but they're still looking for a pick. They certainly are on Vision, and still Antic entertain the idea of baiting them in. Cleanse coming out from the very last moment there by Violet. Member standing in his way to make sure that he doesn't get rooted in place, but he flashes to try and find the kill that are after. Swipe the focus. Dominus threatening with the gold card. The hook lands from max range. And in comes the TP from Bypen, but is it too little, too late? Violet is living, he's kiting, the ballot is being propped, but he gets the reset on kill. And they'll look for the perfect ace as the Twist of Fate wraps around. He'll take down the Varus, but he won't save the game. It's an ace. He absolutely won't. Team Bliss here striking back with Vengeance in game three. 25 minutes in, they will look to claw their way back into the series. They're still down. 
but they're not out. They certainly aren't out of this one, Max. There's still more juice left in the tank. They'll look to try and get themselves on that reverse sweep hype train as they take game three.